Thank you, everyone. So let's begin. President Muhammad Buhari has departed Lon for London in the United Kingdom for a routine checkup. The presidency had said he will be away for about two weeks since assuming office. Buhari has embarked on several trips to the UK to seek medical care, but he has not been to the UK since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. He's expected back in the country in the second week of April. Before the president's departure, they, he met with service chiefs and ordered them to identify leaders of bandits and kidnappers and take them out to restore confidence and normalcy in the affected areas. The president gave the directive as a first assignment to the service chiefs and declared that he would no longer condone a situation where kidnappers set the tone. At the briefing after the security meeting, the National Security Advisor, General Babangana Mungunu, told said House correspondents that the president has issued a warning to all those collaborating with criminals, promising to deal decisively with them. Tonight, we have the president's spokesperson to give us some more insight on this matter. Mr. Garba Shewu joins us from Abuja. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Mr. Shewu. Let's begin by uh, getting to know what more can you tell us about the president's trip to the UK? Uh, thank you for giving us this opportunity and to say that, uh, uh, as you rightly say, it is a medical trip, and uh, about this, there is absolutely no urgency, no emergency. The president is not in any sick condition. It's a routine medical checkup. The president has undertaken this with a set of doctors that he has retained over many, many years. He has done this before he came into office in 2015. and. Uh, he has continued to do that uh, without um, any disruptions. But for last year, 2020, as you rightly said, he couldn't make it because of uh, travel restrictions that uh, COVID uh, epidemic has imposed on the global community. So it's routine. And uh, we're hoping that the president uh, uh, would, would go come back in good time and continue with the work that he's doing. Uh, because of the COVID-19, he couldn't travel. Was there any situation where maybe we had the doctors come to him? No, absolutely no. Uh, there is no record of such. The president has enjoyed an extraordinarily good run of health. He's, when you see his classmates, when they come visiting, you, you would think that uh, a president really is a blessed uh, person. So... He's just, uh, you know, fit and and, uh, and 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 doing well in himself. That's what I want to say. He just chose this moment because, uh, you know, it's it's uh, like a holiday season because uh, Friday, as you know, is a national holiday. On Monday is uh, so he's taking advantage of the Easter season to just uh, go and check up. Otherwise, he's been very well and uh, doing quite fine. Is he going to be working from London, or he has transmitted power to the vice president? Uh, he will continue from wherever he is. Uh, he, the requirement of the law is that if the president is going to be absent in the country for 21 days and more, then that uh, transmission is warranted. In this particular instance, it is not warranted. Is there any need for maybe papers to be approved by him or signed by him? or any? Would there be any need to take things to the, in, in London? Well, in this uh, age of... Uh, improved uh, communications. As a matter of fact, uh, before he left, you just mentioned the meeting with the military chiefs. We had an uh, excellent uh, time with the vice president, with the secretary to the government, with the chief of staff. So he has taken it all around. Uh, if it is warranted, uh, these are transmissible by, by wire. So the internet is there, and the president is uh, happily, equally internet savvy, so therefore, work uh, can continue without any disruptions from whichever location he is. 
COVID is a very major factor traveling these days. Is the president expected to quarantine considering the UK policy on COVID-19? Well, the president is a law-abiding person. We have our own laws, also our regulations with regard to that. Uh, foreign elements who come here uh, should observe what we do. And I imagine that the president will equally be observing regulations as put down by the UK authorities. So perhaps the same thing will happen when the president returns to the country? Well, obviously, the president uh, encourages everyone to go observe the rules. He will not be the one to break them. Well, I don't know if um, uh, the second jab of the COVID-19 vaccine uh, will be ready before the president returns. Should that happen? Will he be taking the second jab over there? No, I think that uh, uh, the regulations put down here gives you uh, three more, three clear months from the first jab. So uh, look to the maybe middle of uh, or the third week of May uh, for the president's uh, second job. He will have been he would have he will have returned by then. Let me also ask uh, this: uh, Did the president travel with the first lady or any member of his family? No, I'm not aware of that. We were at the airport. He alone with uh, the personal uh, close the personal aides uh, entered the plane. If family members would be with him, uh, it must be by a different arrangement. Uh, today, the president leaves for London, and incidentally, tomorrow morning, resident doctors across the country will be on strike. Has he intervened in that matter, or has he asked uh, someone else to intervene on his behalf in the cabinet? Well, the government has been engaging with them all this while, and I believe that uh, we have a very competent minister of labor who has enormous uh, experience uh, in the field. Um, uh, Governor Ingige is doing the right thing, and I'm sure he will handle it well. I hope there will be no strike by tomorrow. I'm asking this question also because of the secure, I mean, the situation of our health system in the country. In yes. five years, it is expected that this administration should have put in place a top-notch hospital or medical facility to take care of the president, especially considering a report which states that Nigeria spends about one billion U.S. dollars on medical tourism. Isn't this an embarrassment uh, to the government to have been able to have not been able to put together a top medical facility instead of adding to the expense of medical tourism? Well, let me first of all say I am not making promises, but I am aware that. Uh, the kind of hospitals you are talking about, there are a number of projects that are ongoing, especially here in Abuja. I know that um, the NNPC, yes, people will ask, why NNPC? The NNPC is putting up this kind of hospital in Abuja. This country's nat national intelligence agency is putting up world-class facility. So there are projects that are going on approved by the president. But uh, outside of this, it must be said that uh, all of these things, they are a function of the resources that are available to the country. When the Minister of Health goes to the National Assembly to ask for funds, the Minister of Defense will be there and he is going to be talking about security. The police will ask for more money because they need to buy weapons and recruit people, agriculture, everyone. So whatever is in the basket, there's a big struggle for it. And then it, the National Assembly plays a role. Executive arm has, a, has its own part. But by the time the budget is finally out there, you will find that uh, sometimes the, the, the spread is so thin on the ground that we are not able to achieve much of it. So it's a function of funding, and we hope that revenue agencies are being asked to do more. We hope that they will generate more money so that we will be spending more on health and other critical sectors of society. Um. It's also critical to know because when you say that this government is going to uh, ensure that there will be uh, a rep reputable um, uh, medical facility that can take care of um, the kind of situation that the president has gone to take care of in London. The question will be, you've not been able to do that in five years. What is the assurance that you can make that happen in eight years? Well, we have... Uh... Don't forget that uh, th this thing just can't drop from the sky. Uh, some of these uh, projects 
are driven in part by money from private sector and uh, even technology and, and the specialists that you need, you obviously have to reach agreements with the suppliers from abroad and all of these things. So yes, it will take time, but the important thing is that we are making progress, we are getting somewhere. In addition to that, I don't have a litany. I hope the Minister of Health will do give you on, on, a, on another day. But I know that a number of hospitals, including the Saudi German hospital, the reputation in the Middle East and all of that, they also have a request. Uh, and uh, I think that request has been okayed by the FCT that they set up a, a facility in Abuja here. Mr. Shaw, how do you explain also, because some, some of the figures that will... Uh, to fix a medical facility or a top-notch hospital, we, we require money. But money doesn't seem to be the problem, considering the fact that about over 13 billion or so have been spent on the state house clinic in five years. And there is also a budgetary, budgetary provision of over 1 billion naira uh, for the state house clinic upgrade. And the Senate committee chair at the time had said that that will end any kind of foreign medical trip, especially for those at the state house or a president, for example. Where does that leave us? Uh, how do we account for those kind of monies that have been spent and now we still have the president to travel? Now, I think that, uh, unfortunately, there is the misperception of the president's trip um, seen, as, uh, seen in the context of medical tourism. President Buhari is not a medical tourist. If somebody has kept a retainership with medical experts, you are talking about to maybe 30 years and plus. Each year, they review you and they examine you and they give you a pass or an advisory on what to do. Uh, 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 would you, given this position, would you yourself be changing your doctors every other year because there's a chance that uh, the, the distance would be shortened no, I think that, uh, that, that the president is wise and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, quite correct in his decision that he retains consistently a set of doctors who have ensured good health for himself. Let's move on. Uh, let's move away from the president's uh, medical attention to uh, some other issues relating to the activity of the president before he traveled and the order he gave uh, to... Uh, the service chief. The president gave an order that the leaders of the bandits and kidnappers should be identified by the service chief. Is there any clear court intelligence that we need to know right now of uh, some kind of unified leadership of these criminals? Well, you know, uh, first of all, it is important that uh, your viewers also understand that uh, uh, the president didn't uh, spank their heads. Rather, he really was appreciative of the positive and the pragmatic approach they have brought since their assumption of, of office. He has commended their decisiveness in dealing with the security challenges of the country, and he has asked them to sustain the momentum. Clear indication is that all the problems have been solved, but we are getting somewhere. Look at the major breakthrough that the police achieved in the southeast. It's shocking to many Nigerians that places of worship and the farmland, farms are being places, I are used as places where killers of policemen and naval officers and military are being harbored. This discovery is shocking. But this is going on all over the country as we speak to you now. The new service chiefs are working with the Inspector General of Police and the heads of the intelligence agencies. And th there is a clear lead. As, as Governor Fayemi, who is the chairman of the Nigerian governors, uh, said uh, two or three days ago, there is a clear lead, a uh, connection now established between kidnapping, banditry, and, and, the, and the terrorism in the country, in term, especially in terms of financing. I'm not going to give you the numbers, but there are a number of people who are currently under arrest who are handling money. Heroes the change that are facilitating money to, to terrorists. We have already worked with the United Arab Emirates. Convictions have been achieved of Nigerians who are transferring money to Boko Haram terrorists. 
And this is also happening domestic, domestically. And I tell you that by the time they finish this investigation, the shocking details would surprise many Nigerians. Are there links of some of these people that you have mentioned tonight that are political in nature? I, I, I don't want to say that because before you know it, uh, opposite numbers in the, in, the, in the PDP will pick this and say there is a witch hunt that is being launched. All I want to say is that the president is determined that, that there will be law and order and there will be punishment for crime in this country. Whoever involved, pray to God that you are not a politician. But if you happen to be one, it will not save you. Perhaps on a final note, uh, since the president has said, identify the leaders of these bandits and kidnappers, and we have some information as to the, out, the linkage of all of these criminalities and these uh, evil activities. Uh, is the government, or what can you tell us about um, activities in bringing back the abductees? Um, though, uh, especially the latest one that we saw in Kaduna and in other places. The, the, the government said it, it will not negotiate or it will not uh, handle them uh, with uh, Keith's glove. But is there any effort ongoing in terms of negotiation or talks with these kidnappers or bandits in bringing those who are abducted back home? Yeah, the government of Kaduna State, uh, from what we are hearing from them, they haven't closed the door to negotiated uh, freedom for these uh, 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 Nigerians. Uh, what he, the governor said and uh, strongly supported by the federal authorities is that there must not be ransom uh, payments. But uh, the governor has encouraged their religious leaders. Some of them have been there in front uh, talking to bandits and uh, their friends. Uh, and so if this is able to yield the freedom for these uh, um, unfortunate brothers and sisters, we hope that it does. But uh, all, 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 all options are on the table except payment for, 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 for ransom. Mr. Garba Shehu, Senior Special Assistant to the President on med Media and Publicity, thank you so much for your time tonight. I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. And that's our show for today, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shehu Akimale. Bye-bye.